Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to create a Samsung wearable with a companion application using the Xamarin and Tizen.net framework. I have made a sample application as you can see here. This is the companion app to the watch. I will press connect and then I'm going to refresh here. Connected to watch. All right, fantastic. Now let's send a message to the phone from the watch by pressing refresh again. Hello from watch. And then we can also send a message to the watch from the phone. Hello. Press send. Message received. And it says hello there. And then note that there's a launch store deep link to release the watch with a companion app on the Galaxy store. You need a deep link to the store. And here is a link that automatically launches on your phone. And it's not set to any package, so there's an error that shows up. And I will show you how you can program this using Xamarin and Tizen.net. Okay, so now we're going to go into the coding portion of your watch and the companion application. We're going to first look at making the application on your smartwatch. So what this project was made off was the template of Tizen wearable XAML application, which I'll show you here. Uh, the Tizen wearable XAML app using Tizen 4.0. I'm not sure about these other things. I'm not too familiar with it, but this is what I, what I used. And afterwards, you have to lay out the environment. So you have to go to your project and add a folder. And that folder will be called um, res, resources, R-E-S. And then in that resource folder, you're going to add a new folder that will be called XML. And in that XML folder, you're going to make an XML file. And you're going to have to call it accessory services. And in that accessory services, you have to lay out the foundation of how your watch communicates with your phone. So for this example, I have the ID called example companion. And this information is all available on the GitHub. So after you've done that, you have to go to the Tizen manifest to change some things. Uh, we go to privileges here and we want to add the app manager launch that is in this list here. But this accessory protocol is not. So you'll have to paste in this privilege yourself, and that is um, provided from the documentation by Samsung, or you could just simply copy it from my GitHub, the raw XML file, which is shown here. And I'm not too sure about the Bluetooth privilege. I have it just in case because it connects to your, because it connects to your phone using Bluetooth. I have it just in case. And after that, you have to add it in a key value metadata, the accessory service location key, and then the value of where the location of the accessory service XML is. So you copy and paste that information. So after you've done all that, you add in the Samsung accessory protocol. I use the runtime one because it's more recent and updated and includes a runtime assembly. So these are my NuGet packages, and once you've done all that, you are ready to code to make your watch connect to your phone. So now we're able to code the actual thing. You're going to need these properties, so the connection method that you're going to later create has the right stuff. These are some buttons for the UI to show the user about the connection. Now the real meat and bone of this application is this method right here, the connect method. So the agent, which is your watch, that is the agent. And this example companion string, that is from your accessory service. So these things, they have to match. And then the peer, that is your phone. So it's finding your phone through whatever connection you're on. 
which is Bluetooth, and it creates a channel ID from the connection it finds from the peer. And then if a peer exists, it goes into setting the peer property as the first peer it finds, and then there's an event handler that is made. And in that event handler, this data received delegate is added in. And what that delegate is, is it's a broadcast receiver to check if your phone sent any information. So this is what receives your information from your phone. And then we have our connection set up to be open so that it's open for business. This stuff is just simple UI binding to show the user about the things that are being communicated. This show message method is a function to show a toast display, just like how previously it said receive message or sent message. It's not too important. It's simply a user interface thing that I made. Now this deep link method is something you need added if you want to upload your watch application and it has a companion application coupled with it. Because as I showed previously, when you click the store button, it opened the Play Store link to download the companion application. So what's done here in this method is an app control object is made and I made a string of the URL of the Play Store and you can replace the package with whatever package name of your companion application is and then we use the default operation of your app control and the application ID this com Samsung manager service that is the companion application ID and then we add in extra data about how it's a deep link and then we include the URL and we also tell the app control it's of type phone. This information is not available in any documentation for the .NET framework. It's available for the native and web development environment but not for the .NET so this is why I've made this little tutorial not really much of a tutorial, it's more of an overview on how to make the companion app coupled with the watch. I hope it gives a grounding for people who are trying to develop using Xamarin and the Tizen.net. And we're going to go into developing the companion application for the Android device. So we have here, it started from a simple Xamarin mobile blank application not using iOS, only Android OS, because I do not have an iOS or a Mac to develop it on. And once you have the application made, what you have to do is you have to also add in the XML folder in your resource folder here. So you add in a folder, call it XML, and then you add a new XML file that will also be called accessory services. And your accessory services will hold information. I'll just go over some of the stuff that's listed. The application name, it's whatever the name of your application is. I made the ID the same as the agent ID. The name can be whatever you want. And the role, I'm not too sure on the reason why we need to lay out the role because they can both receive and provide information. But when I read the documentation provided by Samsung, it said to do this. So I'm just following the information. And this is what tells your phone to connect your watch with using the provider service, which we will go into later. And this is all connection information for your watch between your phone. And we also need to add in a Java reference. It's provided in the GitHub link I provided in the description. So once you have that, you go to the DLL folder and include this binding. Once you've done that, you go to the Android manifest now. And that binding you just added, it allows you to use these privileges, these permissions. 
and this allows permissions for your phone to let your watch do some stuff. So you add in these informations and then I also added a permission for the foreground service because when I have the watch connected with the phone I have set it to have a foreground service running and in your application you're going to have to add in some information such as the service for where the provider service class is located. Again, we're going to go into this later more. And we're going to add in some stuff about the intent filters. And you also add in some stuff about the receiver. And it's using this Samsung binding we added previously. And we also have this metadata added, the key value pair for the accessory service that you have added in your research folder. So once you've done all that, you set up the environment to code and ultimately have your phone connect to your watch. Uh, you're gonna create a new class, a new C Sharp class, and you're gonna call it provider service. And in that provider service, you add in the Samsung bindings of these four. And you also add in these information, so your Android manifest has information registered in. So these are some properties for the connection, and some are actually for the notification for when it runs in the foreground. We add in this export attribute to add it into the Android manifest, so it can communicate with the Java binding. I'm not going to go too in depth into every line of this application with a fine tooth comb because it's something you can look and play with when you're developing your application. This is just a groundwork for how to develop the companion application because there's really no documentation on, on how this stuff is ran. So when your phone is called by your watch, it calls this on create. And this is where the Samsung accessory object is created and also the notification to show you that there is a service running in the foreground that there is a connection between your watch and your phone the information between your phone and the watch can be sent using the socket information this m socket service provider that is how the information is sent from your phone to your watch okay that's that you also have to add in, in the main activity, this start service method to start the provider service for when your phone starts running the application. And in my Xamarin forms, I have an interface that connects the Xamarin Android with the Xamarin forms. And this I provide, I provide a service, it allows it to call the close connection and send data down to provide a service and I can call those methods using the code behind in the main page that's provided in the codes here. So this is ultimately the groundwork to having your phone and your watch connect together and I know there's not a lot of documentation available and the ones that are available um, they're outdated and the information it's a bit shoddy so I hope this can help people in their ventures into developing the Tizen framework the Tizen environment because it sure as hell gave me a lot of headaches and it made it made me cry and die inside when I was developing my application for this I hope there's one less sad soul in this world and I hope this helped some people out